If you have an untold story of personal transformation, overcoming adversity, and healing yourself, and you feel compelled to use that and help other people, this episode is for you. So you want to make sure you listen all the way to the end because we are going to be talking about how to launch your holistic business online. The question is, are you ready? All right, let's get to it. Welcome to the Yes To You podcast, where we empower women to manifest their vision of happiness and success with down-to-earth practical guidance for conscious living, personal growth, and entrepreneurship. Our goal is to see you take inspired action by saying yes to your calling. I'm your host and founder of RohiniWellness.com, Dominique D. Wilson. And now, let's get into the topic of the hour. Welcome back to the Yes To You podcast. Today is a very powerful show. As I mentioned before, we are going to be talking about five steps to launch your holistic business online. If like me, you are an inspired woman, then you have a dream of getting out there and making a difference in the world. Problem is, sometimes that dream gets blocked by fear, fear of standing in your power and really being seen. If you haven't already, by the way, make sure you go back and listen to episode three where we talked about how to overcome your fear of being seen and heard. That fear causes us to feel frustrated, we feel defeated, we have all these amazing ideas, we wanna put them into action, but we're not really sure where to get started. So today I want to share with you five steps that are going to help you put things into perspective of how to go from the idea stage to actually bringing those ideas and combining it with your powerful message based on your story, creating something that you can then put out into the world to help enrich the lives of other people as well as bring prosperity to yourself. So we are going to be diving right into that as soon as we return from this short break. Body, body. My, 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 spirit, spirit, this is your weekly wellness tip. Today's wellness tip is on forgiveness. Forgiveness is an individual journey of learning to accept what is, learning to integrate all parts of our story so that we can move forward as a whole and complete expression of who we are and stand on our story, the lessons, the wisdom, and the insight and move forward in a way that is healing and empowering to ourselves and to others around us as well. Carrying around chronic anger and feelings of resentment puts you in a perpetual state of fight or flight, and this can affect your health big time. It can actually make changes in your heart rate, your blood pressure, even your immune response. But the good news is that you can take back control of your wellness by starting a practice of forgiveness work. And get this, studies have actually shown that forgiveness reduces your risk of heart attack. It reduces cholesterol, improves your sleep. It can relieve pain. It lowers blood pressure, anxiety, depression, and stress. These are all amazing benefits of forgiveness, but the greatest one of all is being able to reclaim your personal freedom. So today I want to share with you four things that you can do to start cultivating a practice of forgiveness work. The first thing is to begin with a self-evaluation. I do think it's important to look at the experiences that you're having difficulty moving beyond, see them with new eyes, to be objective, withhold any judgment, and just observe how they made you feel, but most importantly, how they are still impacting you to this day. These are very important questions because once you have awareness of how this situation is still impacting you, you'll have the motivation to power through the forgiveness practice because I'll be honest with you, it's not always the easiest thing to do. The second thing you can do is to release expectations. In his book, The Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz sums this up amazingly in the third agreement, which is don't make any assumptions. He talks about how when we get into relationship with someone we like, the mind has this need to justify why it is that we like the person. And I quote, you only see what you want to see and you deny that there are things that you don't like about that person. You lie to yourself just to make yourself right. Then... You make assumptions, and one of the assumptions is, my love will change this person, but this is not true, unquote. So it's so important to go back through your story as you're doing your self-assessment and just see where you may have had some expectations set up and ask yourself, were my expectations appropriate? 
Were they creating the space for that person to show up authentically as their true self, or was I hoping that they would be someone else that would align with my ideal of who they should be? Now, the third way that you can go about forgiveness work is to practice awareness through compassion. This is where you use your empathy and your compassion to separate a person from their behavior. We are not our external characteristics. I know that there is one life that pulses throughout every fiber of this universe, and everything in existence is an expression of this one life, including you and me. So therefore, I am another yourself. You are a divine reflection of some aspect of me. So for me to reject you, I'm only rejecting some part of myself that I either cannot see right now or choose not to see. So this is a fundamental core of what forgiveness is all about. When you understand that we are all connected and that all of your relationships are here to help you grow and elevate because they reveal things for you about you that you can't necessarily see when you're on your own. When you understand that, Love is acceptance and you fully accept yourself. When you fully love yourself, you have the capacity to love everyone else as well because you realize that there is only one. Don Miguel Ruiz says, and I quote, real love is accepting other people the way they are without trying to change them, unquote. This brings us to the fourth thing that you can do to cultivate a practice of forgiveness, and that is don't take anything personally. This is actually the second of the four agreements in Don Miguel Ruiz's book. And I can summarize this entire chapter in one single sentence, and I quote, Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. To close out the segment, I'd like to leave you with an affirmation that I pulled from the Heart Thoughts Affirmation Cards by Louise Hay. I am always safe. I release my emotional attachment to beliefs from the past so that they do not hurt me in the present. I am safe. If you haven't read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, be sure to check the show notes. I will leave a link for you. I highly recommend that you add this book to your reading list. And I will also post a link to the Heart Thoughts Affirmation Cards. And on that note, let's get back to the show. Welcome back to the show. As I said today, we are going to be talking about five steps to launch your holistic business online. If you have an untold story of personal transformation, overcoming adversity, or healing yourself and a desire to get out there and make an impact and help other people in the world, then you have everything you need internally to start your business as a holistic entrepreneur. Whether you consider yourself to be a healer, a coach, a speaker, a writer, an artisan, or an artist, all of these are different creative forms of holistic entrepreneurship. And whether you are planning on selling physical, tangible products or services or even digital products, the process of getting started launching your business and putting yourself out there is just about the same. So today, my goal is to give you an overview to show you the five basic steps that are required for you to go from the stage of having an idea in your head to actually creating something and putting it out there to start making that impact that you want to see in the world. So here are the five steps. Number one, clarify your vision. Number two, define your mission. Number three, monetize your brilliance. Number four, create your platform. And number five, take inspired action. So let's dive right into step one, which is clarify your vision. If you missed it, episode two of this podcast was entitled How to Create a Bold Vision for Your Inspired Life. If you haven't listened to that, I highly suggest that once you finish this episode, you go back and listen to that because it's going to provide a lot more clarity and emphasis on how to create a vision for your life, which is going to inform every decision you make about your business going forward. I also have a free resource that perfectly complements that particular episode. It's called the Create Your Vision Workbook, and you'll find that over at rohiniwellness.com forward slash vision, and I will also post that link in the show notes. This is a printable PDF guide that's going to take you through four steps to create a vision for your life, so I highly suggest those two resources, episode two and the free Create Your Vision Workbook. If you want to start a business, why are we talking about vision? Here's why. 
your vision is what gives context to everything that you do in your personal and professional life going forward. When it comes to starting a business, it's so important to start with your vision because that's what's going to inform the business model that you choose. It'll inform the types of programs, products, or services that you create, the location of your business. It informs the systems that you build into your business, whether you will be a solopreneur working on your own or whether you'll be working with a team or perhaps have a business partner. All of these decisions come from having a clear vision of the life that you want to create. So before we dive into the actual workings of putting the business together, we have to take a step back and see what it is that you want. What is this business going to do for you on a personal level? So when you're creating your vision, you want to look at your lifestyle, your health, your finances, career, your money, your relationships, your social and community impact, all of these areas are going to be affected and are going to play a very key role in your life as an entrepreneur. So it's very important that when you are planning on building a business, that that business is in alignment with what you actually want. Because the last thing you want to do is to create something that's going to be a second job for you or that's going to feel like work. So what's your vision? Do you want your business to create freedom in your finances? Do you want freedom of your time? Freedom of location? So when you're writing your vision, you want to think about do you really want to be in one location or do you want to create a location independent business? It doesn't mean that you can't sell your products. It just means that you change the way in which you disseminate those products so that you are free to move about as you choose. This is just one example of why having a vision is so important. Literally every decision you make about your business is going to boil down to the vision for what you want to create in terms of your lifestyle. So I invite you to have a lot of fun in this process of visioning. Take advantage of the Create Your Vision workbook. Again, when you get a chance, make sure you check the show notes because I'll include all of this information there. So don't worry if you're on the go. So now let's move on to step two, which is define your mission. I want to share a quote with you really quick. It's from the book, Start With Why, written by Simon Sinek. This is another powerful book to add to your reading list, especially if you are planning on launching a business. In the book, he says, achievement comes when you pursue and attain what you want. Success comes when you are clear in pursuit of why you want it. The former is motivated by tangible factors, while the latter is something deeper in the brain where we lack the capacity to put those feelings into words. When you know why you're moving forward into something, it's going to give you the motivation to power through the tough times because I'll be honest with you, there will be times when you are frustrated, it gets hard, you may not have all the answers you need right away, and the one thing that's going to keep you going no matter what is knowing your why. Your mission accounts for all the steps that you are going to take in order to bring your vision into full manifestation. So now that you've clarified your vision, in order to define the actual mission, we have to start getting clear on what your values are. So we want to look at your top three to five core values. Now there's an excellent free resource available online. It'll take you about 30 minutes. It's an assessment called the Value Determination Process by Dr. John D. Martini. He's a world-renowned polymath, speaker, author, teacher, an absolute brilliant soul. Now, this may sound like a really dry activity, but I assure you, it will literally change the whole way that you look at life from this point going forward. When you know what your core values are, it makes it easier for you to say yes to the things that are in alignment with your purpose and to say no to the things that aren't. Sometimes we can blur our yeses and nos because we're not really sure if we're making the right decision or if we're going to hurt someone's feelings by turning down an opportunity. But when we do this, when we launch into these people-pleasing behaviors, they take us off of our path and they hurt us in the long run. So knowing your values will give you the confidence that you need to say no when the time is appropriate because you know that as long as you are moving in the direction in accordance with your highest values, there's never anything to feel bad about. There's never anything to apologize about. So definitely make sure you check out Dr. John Demartini's value determination process. I will leave a link to that in the show notes for you. 
Once you know your values, you then want to look at your character strengths. Your strengths are aspects of your personality that inform the way that you show up on a day-to-day -day basis. Your strengths impact the way that you interact with other people, what type of work ethic you have, the way you think about the world and perceive things. This is going to help you to know which things in your business are you going to be best at doing on your own and which things do you need to delegate. You can't do everything on your own all the time. So it's so important to be able to clearly delineate between what you're really strong at and the things that would be best to delegate to someone else. So knowing your character strengths is going to be instrumental in this process. And I have another freebie for you. This is an evidence-based assessment you can take online completely free that will actually reveal what your character strengths are and give you a very clear picture of where you really shine and where you need to do a little more work and delegate some things out so that you can move forward as a powerhouse. So now that you know what your core values are and what your character strengths are, the next step is to set yourself up to succeed in the process of launching your business. By this, I mean having absolute mastery over your time. If you are still in the workforce, chances are you don't have all the free time in the world to build a business. So this is when you have to get really intentional about every single hour and how it is that you want to use your time. The first thing I recommend is to write down your current schedule. Monday through Sunday, what does every day currently look like? It doesn't have to be exact, but try to account for what your current life looks like so that you can get a clear picture of where there's opportunities to start building in time to build your business. Perhaps you have two, three, four hours at the end of the day after your shift or in the daytime before you go into work. Maybe you have some time that you can use on the weekends. I want you to account for every single hour and just see how much time are you actually working? How much time do you currently spend on leisure? This is going to help you to be really clear about how much time you actually have. You would be surprised at how much time you can reclaim by simply being intentional about it. So once you've accounted for all your time and how it's currently being used, the next thing you want to do is to create a daily schedule for yourself and start sticking to it. If you're serious about building this business, you have to be serious about owning your time and directing it to the things that are actually going to move you forward. Then, once you have your daily schedule set up, the next step would be to create a morning routine for self-care. It is so important that those first few hours when you wake up each day that you have your mind set on what it is that you intend to feel, experience, and achieve for that day. Now your morning routine doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as saying, you know what, I'm gonna wake up an hour earlier each day to make sure that I take a little bit of time to meditate and do some journaling. And then I'm gonna do my self-care practices, maybe exercise, take a spiritual bath, whatever that is for you. And then you wanna make sure that you make a little to-do list for yourself. I would highly suggest that you limit your to-do list to no more than three items. You want to pick the three most important items that must get done for that day and write those three things down. And finally, set an intention for what it is that you want to feel, experience, or achieve that day. So there you have it. Those are the components of defining your mission. Making sure that you know what your core values are, know what your character strengths are, and set yourself up to succeed by putting yourself on a daily schedule with a morning routine that you carry out every single day. Step number three is to monetize your brilliance. And of course, the very first phase of monetization is to come up with an annual income goal. This number is going to inform the way that you create programs, products, services, the way that you price your programs, products, and services, the frequency that you'll be needing to sell. All of that information is going to come out of your income goal. Now that you have an income goal, you know how much money that you'd like to make. This is when it's time to really hone in on what I call your zone of brilliance, or in other words, your niche. This is where three things collide. Number one, your passion. Number two, your skills and expertise. And number three, the marketplace or the demand for your programs, products, and services. When you're thinking about your passion, think about what it is that you could do or talk about all day and never tire of that never feels like work. Write down what it is that you're passionate about. 
The next thing, your skills and expertise. This can be a mix between formal education, possibly certifications that you have, and informal education from life school, the school of hard knocks. Life experience provides you with so much wisdom and insight that is absolutely priceless. You would be surprised at what people are willing to pay you for what you know, just based on going through different things, overcoming challenges, adversity, and finding solutions that you can then share with someone else. So once you've written all these things down, then you want to start looking for the areas in which they overlap. This will be your zone of brilliance, your niche. In other words, this is the central theme around which you are going to build all of your programs, your products, and your services. Now to add on to the zone of brilliance, the next thing you want to look at is who your ideal client, customer, or audience member is. I wouldn't recommend going too crazy with all the demographics. However, you do want to have a general idea of what is this person struggling with? What are their fears, their hopes, their dreams, their biggest concerns? How can you help them to solve their problem or to address those concerns? Are they male, female, younger, older? What are some of the things they like to do? Where do they hang out? Do they like to spend their time on Facebook? Do they attend local business conferences or wellness events? Get a general ballpark idea of who this person is. And what you want to do is really combine a little bit of imagination with what you already know about who you used to be before you solved your own problem. This is what's really going to inform your ideal client avatar or persona as you're writing this information down. Even if you've never worked with a client before, you can still come up with an idea of who you'd like to work with. And one last thing to keep in mind as you're thinking about defining the characteristics of your ideal client, is this someone who you would actually enjoy spending time around outside of what it is that you do? Would you have them over for coffee? Do you enjoy their company? This is how you'll know that you are an energetic match for the people who you are intending to attract to connect with your programs, products, and services. So now you have your income goal, you know what your zone of brilliance is, you know who it is you want to work with. It's time to think about some programs, products, and services that would best meet the needs of your ideal client. Are you going to be selling physical, tangible products that need to be shipped out to people? Are you offering services that are performed in person, over the phone, or virtually? Perhaps freelance services such as virtual assistants. Or are you selling digital products, ebooks, downloads, courses, virtual workshops? These are some things to think about when it comes to monetizing your brilliance. There are so many different ways that you can package your products and services. Again, this goes back to your initial vision. What types of products, programs, services are going to allow you the freedom to move through life in a way that is ideal to you, bring in the type of income that you'd like to receive, and at the same time, make the impact that you want to make in the world. So these are the things you want to be thinking about in step three, which is monetize your brilliance. Now let's move on to step four, which is to create your platform. Your platform is like a stage that you stand upon. It's how you enable yourself to actually be seen. It doesn't matter what kind of business you're running. Everyone needs a website. And nowadays, even if you're not that tech savvy, there are so many options available on the market for you to have a pretty professional looking website up and running in no time, such as Wix, WordPress. These are just some things that you can start thinking about. I will leave some information and some links in the show notes to sites where you can actually go to get a website set up relatively quickly. With that said, I wanna make a very important point here. When it comes to your business, I absolutely do not recommend starting out with a free website and here's why. Free websites, in my opinion, simply aren't worth it. Number one, when you're on a free website, you don't really own that platform. So you don't want to build a business on something that you don't own and that you don't have control over. If ever the host of that free website 
decides to go out of business or make a change, they can easily shut down that website and you could lose all of the content that you've posted there. So there's a big danger in having a free website. Yes, it's convenient. It offers all these free flexible options, but it comes at a very heavy cost. So you have to weigh the pros and cons and ask yourself, is this something that I really want to get into? So it's good to be mindful about the image and the message that you send across. Anything that you put out into the world is a part of your brand. So if you want to have a strong brand where people trust you and are willing to invest in your services, you have to be willing to also invest in yourself. So I definitely recommend that you start by purchasing your own domain name. I like to use GoDaddy. I will leave a link in the description box for you. Once you've purchased a domain name, then you want to make sure you have website hosting. In other words, this is where your website and your content will actually live. Think of it as a giant plot of real estate on the internet. This is your hosting. I'm a big fan of Bluehost. I've been with them for many years. They offer 24 hour customer service. Anything you need assistance with, they're right there to help, especially if you're not tech savvy. This is a great option. So I will also post their information in the show notes for you. To sum this up, when you're creating your platform, make sure you establish your own website. Once you do have a website set up, there's a few essential things that you wanna make sure you have going. You wanna create an about page. Did you know that the about page or about us or about me is the number one page visited on just about any website? And this has been statistically proven over and over again. People want to see the face behind the brand. So make sure that you create an about page Add a little bit of information about yourself, post up one of your most recent photos, and let people actually see the face behind your brand. Another thing you want to make sure you have is a contact me page. Make sure that people have a way to get in contact with you. As wonderful as your services are and as beautiful as your website is, if people don't know how to get in contact with you, it doesn't serve its full purpose. And finally, you want to make sure that you have your services or your products page, or this might be a shopping cart page for you. This is where you are going to tell people exactly how they can work with you. And the final thing that you want to include anywhere on your website is a call to action. Make sure that on any given page of your website, as I'm scrolling through, you need to be informing me of what do you want me to do next. After I've visited your homepage, what next? So maybe there might be a button or a link that says, work with me, click here to book now, buy now, shop now, call me, something. Make sure that you have that call to action. So those are just a few essential components for making sure that your website is set up properly. The other half of your platform is your social media presence. Social media includes things such as Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. It also includes your email list. Going back to the exercise we did in Monetize Your Brilliance, where we talked about your ideal client, this is where this comes in handy. You want to have an idea of where your ideal clients hang out so that you can choose the right social media site to start marketing on. There are so many different options out there nowadays, and you don't need to be on every social media platform. So you want to choose one platform. If you're not really sure which platform to get started on, I would suggest either starting with Facebook or Instagram. With over 3 billion active daily users, there's a good chance that your ideal client is on one, if not both, of these platforms. It's a great place to start building your social media platform so that people can get to know you. Now, it's very important to keep in mind that social media is nothing more than a tool to drive people back to your website so that they can invest in your services. This is why it's so important to make sure that you have your own website so that once you start building relationships with people on social media, they have a place to go forward and connect with you on a long-term basis. Now, if you are completely new to social media, you're just now getting started and you want to understand how to establish your business on Facebook or Instagram, I do have an ebook available. It's called How to Get Your Business Started on Social Media. I will also include a link to that in the show notes. And that brings us to the fifth and final step when it comes to launching your holistic business online, which is to take inspired action. 
This is a stage where you literally take everything, all the components we've been talking about. This is when it's time to actually implement these things, create something, put it out there. So for you, it might be picking up the phone and calling a potential client. This could also look like creating a blog post or creating a social media post to start advertising your products and services. Whatever that step is for you, it's important, it matters, and it's going to move you forward in the direction of fulfilling your big vision of happiness and success. The Create Your Vision Workbook, which I mentioned earlier, does have a section at the end called a 30-day jumpstart plan. This is a great template to use to actually take a goal and break it down into daily step-by-step actions. So again, you can find the Create Your Vision Workbook at rohiniwellness.com forward slash vision. And I will also link that in the show notes for you. So to summarize, we talked about the five steps to launch your holistic business online, which were clarify your vision, define your mission, monetize your brilliance, create your platform, and take inspired action. All of the information that I've shared with you in today's episode is for your personal enrichment, and I certainly hope it's beneficial to you as you get started with your holistic business, but of course, it's just an overview. If you'd like to go deeper, I do offer a four-week business mentorship program called Launch Already, Five Steps to Launch Your Holistic Business Online. You can find out more about that at rohiniwellness.com forward slash biz mentor. I will also post that link in the show notes for you. If you have further questions or something that you would like me to expound upon, please send your questions to feedback at yes to you podcast.com and I would be happy to discuss it further with you and potentially create another episode around that particular topic. Be sure to tune in again next Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time for an all new episode that's all about blogging. We are going to be talking about not only how to launch and promote your blog, but how to stay consistent as a blogger and power through things like writer's block. So don't miss out on that. Tune in to episode six. And until then, remember, you get to choose how you show up in life. Love yourself fiercely, own your story, and say yes to your calling. It was a pleasure to have you join us for this episode of the Yes to You podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to visit rohiniwellness.com forward slash vision to download my free PDF starter guide, the Create Your Vision Workbook. If this episode was helpful for you, please leave us a review on iTunes. Also, when you share this episode on social media using hashtag yes to you, we'll give you a shout out on a future episode. We look forward to inspiring you next time right here on the Yes to You podcast.